if you change the basis, you know, originally, you know, K1, K2, K3, for instance, right, they are not invertible. But if you change the basis, they become invertible. And also, by choosing the basis, you can increase the weight, you know, which means you can increase probability. So that's the kind of scheme you know, we're working on. This is called the uh, uh, environment assisted form state restoration with a big environment. So that's, that's the, uh, the final slide I think I want to show. There's other details, but I just skip I mean, these. OK, so I think uh, I already used the time. OK, thank you very much. Uh, that's basically the conclusion. So uh, as I said, you know, the, uh, that's all we have done so far. You know. We extend the, uh, the one qubit case proposed by Werner to the n qubit. You know, and also we extend the measurement. So in the original scheme, they only use standard quantum operation, which of course, I mean, we know the limitation. This is impossible. If you stick to that scheme, then you can only deal with very, very limited system. Here, you know, essentially we show, you know, we can extend this one into, you know, many, many different kind of system, which, of course, we have to pay some price here. As I said, you know, the deterministic become problem, probabilistic process. So this is the kind of thing we have to face. Thank you very much. Think it's, uh, it's likely, yeah, that's an interesting idea, but I don't know how to do that precisely. But sure. I think it's like yeah, we, we yeah. could try to look, right? If we if you have like new strategies for error correction which work in some cases, not yeah. in other cases, yes, that's right. maybe there is some non RU yeah. type of decomposition which nonetheless is right. useful. Definitely, yeah. I think yeah, that's very, very likely. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know if this time duration, this time interval reacted the performance of the operation. Because I, I mm -hmm. visualize it, if the system was right, right. that yeah. busy and mm -hmm. it cannot correct it. This is a very good question. Yeah. Uh, typically, you know, we know that the after some time, when the state become completely destroyed, right? So it's, uh, it's impossible, if, I mean, it's difficult, if not impossible, to recover from the state. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of things, you know, for this scheme, you know, in principle, we don't have this kind of a limitation for time duration, you know. But that definitely is good, but, you know, we can think about like, oh, I want to recover state in one hour, or in three hours, but at least for this scheme, Assuming everything, the idea. of course, I mean, we have to introduce some actual, you know, uh, noise here. At least within this scheme, the time is not problem. Yeah, you can recover one year later because the R U decomposition in principle, right? In principle, encode information there, right? So no matter how long, but it's always R U decomposition. But in the, in the second case, you know, we use a big environment. In that case, of course, I mean, the, uh, the sooner the better. You know, you have to perform, try to perform the measurement as, you know, as early as possible. That's right. That's very, very good comment. Uh, 
I think I also have to mention this. The kind of application, you know. I although I present this talk, you know, in a way, you know, it's kind of I try to control noise, right? On the other hand, you know, I can try to do, to do something different. I try to exploit, you know, this kind of scheme. You know, for instance, uh, this is a part of future interest, I mean future uh, result, you know, future application. Uh, for instance, you know, I have a kind of, you know, I, I have a quantum safe, you know, stored in uh, Taiwan University here, right? I travel from the state to here. I carry my key, you know, of course my key is not safe, you know, might get, I might get lost, you know, in the airport or, you know, was stolen by someone, whatever, you know, so you, you might just put the key, you know, all the way into the, your hot coffee, but, uh, you know, in many different ways you can destroy your key. So the question is, how can you, you know, securely protect your key? So the one way to do that is, before, you know, before, uh, before, you know, traveling to Taiwan University, yeah, I put my key, the quantum key here, quantum key represented by a quantum state, put my key, you know, was in, in contact with some, like a, a hydrocultural controlling machine, you know, which here is just environment, right? So then key become entangled with the central hydrocultural, you know, the central machine. So then you see, essentially, one that carry the key on the with me, even someone stole my, steal my key, right? But he can't recover anything because key is entangled with this another system. So key is useless because if you measure the key, you just you break all of the links. So you don't know the key, right? You don't know the key, the up or down, whatever. So you can have a key like superposition, you know, excited state, wrong state. But why I want to use the key, you know, why I come to Professor one here, you know, I want to open the quantum safe. I simply, you know, have a, a call, you know, to the uh, high set, uh, high quarter, you know, tell them perform, perform the measurement on the central machine. They did that, of course, I mean, but they also talk, tell me, oh, what's the output here, right? So I can use the output to perform a reversal operation. Then I recover the state. So this is a way, you know, you know very interesting. So I just want to say, you know, the same idea, you know, you can think about how to control decoherence. On the other hand, you can think about how to, you know, exploit the noise to protect your state for your own purpose. That's it. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that uh, quantum computing is very That's right, that's right. The, uh, if you have a large number of qubits, so the composition itself becomes extremely difficult, right? So it's uh, highly inefficient. That's true. Yeah, that's the kind of, uh, I mean, uh, I would say, you know, the, uh, the practicality, you know, this is a kind of thing, you know, we know in principle we can do that. But uh, in practice, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's really difficult. You know? I think probably we can still only concentrate on a small system. For a really large system, you know, consisting of thousand hundred cubes, it's already you know too difficult for us. Now. But at least we show in principle we can do that. Uh, sorry. Uh, may, may I ask that if this scheme are restricted, it are restricted in discussion in some specific environment or in general environment? That's a good question too. Yeah. The uh, typically, you know, the at the moment, we deal with two typical environments. One I said already, you know, it's called dephasing. You know, this is a very important for quantum information. Uh, means the, you cause decoherence without energy dissipation. So it's called pure dephasing. It's very important, you know, for the quantum computing science. The other one is called amplitude, like a spot <coughs> estimation, right? You have item, even environment is in vacuum, still item will decay. So this, this type of noise is called amplitude uh, damping noise. So at least for these two typical noises, we know how to do that. But I'm not claiming, you know, we can do this for arbitrary kinds of noise. But that's a good question too, yes. Uh, uh, another question is that, uh, can, this, can the 
scheme uh, used in device is just the environment with uh, uh, many uh, many uh, many formula particles. Can can many uh, formula. Formula. Yes. yes. Uh, can be. I I think yes yes yes. Also that, that's true. In, that's true. Yes. We this one actually you know I haven't made it very specific you know when I'm talking measurement. Of course the calculation we uh, we did here is for boson. Yes. But it's equally applicable to. Oh. Thank you.